I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. It's an absolutely marvellous experience. Really, I suppose in a way there are two things and reasons I'm here, if I think about it. One is me, I mean, to listen and learn. There's just, I mean, imagine the opportunity to hear Father Robert Barron. I've seen him on the film thing of me and I want to meet him, so there's that. And then the other is for me to be able to meet some of the nice uh, people, the kind people who watch me. Um, it's sort of funny because one has to say about 49 times the answer to the question, how are things in the church in Britain? But I enjoy doing that and I enjoy talking about it. So I'd rather, I like to be part of helping people to be informed and I'd rather they knew what was going on in Britain, the bad and the good, than just uh, went home thinking, oh well, that was fine, but so I'd like to be part of, part of what we're doing here. One of the most exciting projects I've done in recent years is about uh, Pope John Paul II, the great, the great John Paul. And one of the things he taught us, which is summed up rather well in that book by George Weigel, is that it is culture, not politics, not political lobbying, it is culture that drives history over the long haul. This made a great impression on me as I pondered it, and it's something that I think is very important. We can all help to foster an authentic Christian culture, and that is what will drive history over the long haul. It's also important for us in our own journey. We want to meet the Lord at the end of our lives. It's not political lobbying. It's living the Christian life and living it to the full and sharing it. I think that's what I'd like, that's what I'd like to share with everybody else here. There are some terrific people on EWTN, real experts. So much to learn about the scriptures, about the sacraments, about communicating the joy of Christ. And uh, I'm sort of slightly embarrassed, really. I mean, am I the sort of red-faced English woman that does cookery programs and so on? But I think the bit that matters in a way is culture. I, when, I, when I think about Britain, especially on these hot summer evenings, and I, I, think, I think about the way it really is, and the young people in any given town or suburb congregating by the railway station or in the shopping centre, vomiting and hitting one another and shrieking, issuing their mate cries. And they're sort of spiritual and cultural orphans, and they're, they're not happy, really. They don't know who they are. They don't know how marvellous it is to be human. And I just would love to help to tell them who they are, that they're not orphans, that they have a God, there is a culture. I'd just really like us to share that marvellous news about what it is to be truly alive and where we're all going. I, I, think, I think that's just so important. I think the bit I'd really like to emphasise is that the new evangelisation is not optional. I mean, it's urgent, really. And facing the sort of threats that we face in the Western world is not something that should daunt us. It should be seen as an opportunity and a challenge. And in a sense, what the church offers is so beautiful. And today we can work in tandem with other Christians. There's so much friendship and goodwill. That the problems of yesterday are not the problems of today. And today and tomorrow, we're going to have to face things that require a lot of courage. We need to be able to have a dialogue with Islam that comes from immense joy and confidence on our part, real confidence in the truth. And we need to confront our secular society with the joy of the gospel. And both of, them, both of those things are going to require courage, real courage. What you get at a convention like this is a lot of interesting stuff, good material, good conversations, fabulous range of books and information, and, and also a joy in the faith. It's not a reaffirmation, it's more deep than that. It's a sort of spiritual nourishment. It's just terrific.